Hey, welcome to another Flare Court Media Camera thing. I'm Jason, and I apologize about the background noise. I'm near the interstate, but that's because I wanted to come to this spot specifically so that you could get a good look at the architecture of this beautiful church behind me. And the reason for that is because in a moment in this video, we're going to go a mile out that way and look back on it. I want you to see what it's supposed to look like. And the fact that we're looking at this church again means that we are comparing digital zooms. Now, last time I did this, it was with the Google Pixel 3, which had just came out and they had a feature that they called Super Res Zoom, which basically meant it took a whole bunch of little pictures and used the motion of your hand and it would bend the pixels to create a sharper image than the competition. And we found out in that video that, yeah, it's true. The, the Pixel 3 did a good job on the, compared to the competition, on the digital zoom. Now, last year I came out with my Google Pixel 4 which came out with two lenses on the phone. So you had a one times optical zoom and a two times optical zoom. I tested the same thing and I found out that taking the one times optical zoom and zooming in digitally 0.9, so 1.9 just before it click over to the two times optical zoom, that the image looked better in that digital zoom than the optical image at the two times. And that's because they had put their processing into that 0.9 to clean it up compared to just the flat optical. Now they've since fixed whatever that bug was <laughs> the, or cleaned up the two times optical so it looks better now. But that has been in the back of my mind this whole time. How good is digital zoom now? The old saying is never use digital zoom. And if you want to zoom in on something, use Photoshop. And I'm here to tell you that that's wrong. Now, let me, let me stop right there before you go to the comments. I'm not saying you should ever use digital zoom as a print worthy option or as something that you want to look as good as optical. It won't be as good as optical, but the saying that digital zoom in cameras sucks and you should use Photoshop to zoom in instead is wrong. And I'm here to prove it to you. I took three different phones, three different cameras and an iPad for good measure and I zoomed in to all the different levels of zoom that they claim. Most cameras, most of the digital point and shoot cameras have what they call clear optical zoom or clear digital zoom or whatever. And that's a level of digital zoom that they feel comfortable saying, this still looks pretty good. And then they have the full digital zoom that would be like eight times or something, whereas the other ones are maybe two times. So I took all the pictures at these different levels and then I went and took an optical picture at the max optical zoom. And I took them into Photoshop and stretched them so that they are all the same size. And in every single picture, every single option except one where it could have gone either way, in a blind test for my eyes, I picked the camera digital zoom over what Photoshop was able to do. So let's go down there and take some pictures and then we'll go back to the office and compare those and you can see for yourself. All right, here are the parameters of the test basically on this Sony ZV-1. I'm going to demonstrate it but not show you the whole thing because there's a lot of cars behind me. Uh, basically, I can come in here and do optical zoom, clear image zoom, or digital. These are both digital, but they think this one looks better. So anyway, we're going to do optical zoom only. Then we're going to come here. I'm going to zoom into the max. I guess I'm already there. Zoom into the max of the digital zoom, optical zoom. I want to take a picture. I'm going to come back here and turn on clear image zoom. And I'm going to zoom in to that. So now we're in digital realm two times. Go and take another picture. And then one more time, going to come here, digital zoom. And that's going to let me go up to four times. Take a picture. So I'm going to do that with all the cameras and then go and edit them the Photoshop to look at the same zoom level as these digital zooms. All right, I finished taking those pictures and I have processed them in the computer already. But let me kind of go over the methodology of this and why you might even consider this an important test. 
My thinking is you want to show someone in a video, you know, something far away. Now you could leave it at the optical zoom level that your camera permits, and you could be like, nah, I'm not zooming in any closer because this is optically clear and you should not look at a digital zoom. But no, no, you're not gonna do that. The people want to see, even if it is a little blurry, so in this example I'm showing you, the Nebraska State Capitol has a statue on top of it. Zooming all the way back, people are like, yeah, that's a gray blob up there. But if you digitally zoom in, then they can see some features, they can see some shape. Viewers don't care about optical clarity, especially in a video, when they just want to see something closer. And unless you have, you know, a big telephoto optical lens like this, you're gonna be relying on the digital zoom or post-processing zooming of an image to see it more clearly. And so what I did was I took a 3840 by 2160 frame, which is what 4K is, and I took a digital zoom picture from all of these cameras and cropped it to that 4K screen. And then I went and took the, so some of these have multiple optical levels. I took the further or most magnified optical level I could get to that digital zoom. And I set the opacity to 50% in Photoshop. I stretched it out so it was the same size as the digital zoom. And then I set the opacity back to 100%. I did some cropping, I slid them off to the side. So now we can compare Photoshop versus digital zoom. And you can actually run this test for yourself. I have a link in the video description down below where I have them compared and you can look at them and decide which one you like better. And then if you click to the next picture, it'll be labeled which one is Photoshop. So you can compare unlabeled, which one do I like better? Go down, see which one is Photoshopped and judge for yourself. Uh, and I did not do any kind of um, trickiness with which one's Photoshop and which one's not left or right. I was really random. I just was dragging all over the place and so, oh, that's the Photoshop one. Okay, we'll put it there, put it there. So don't think I'm trying to trick you with which one is Photoshop and which one's digital zoom as you scroll through those because I was not paying attention if it was on the left or the right. But let's go over these cameras really fast. So first up, I used an iPhone 7. It just has the one camera back here. I wish I could have used a newer iPhone, but I can only imagine that a newer iPhone is going to do a better job than an iPhone 7. So this is even a better test to see if this four-year-old now, at least, uh, iPhone does a good job. Next up was the Google Pixel 4, uh, which has a wide angle lens and a telephoto lens. So I used both lenses as well as the zoom in that. Then next is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with its three cameras back here. Uh, I did not do the ultra wide camera because that was pointless. It's only 0.5 different compared to the wide angle. So I did do a zoom in on the wide angle as far as it could go, and then I did a zoom in on the telephoto. Now the wide angle also has a 108 megapixel mode uh, where it takes a whole, you know, much sharper resolution image. So I also compared that as well to see if those extra megapixels made up for a, um, allowed us to crop in better. Then I have the Canon SX740HS. Now this does have a monster optical zoom that rivals this. Now clearly you're going to get a better picture of this, but this does let you zoom all the way in optically, but then it lets you do a digital zoom on top of that. So that's what we compared. Uh, next is the Sony ZV-1. Uh, not quite that big of an optical zoom, but anyway, we got that in there. And then I always have to look this one up. The Panasonic DC-ZS70. This one also has a monster zoom. It doesn't quite rival the Canon, but it's pretty good. So have that. And then just for fun, because I had two Android devices, I used my iPad, uh, which this is the iPad Pro 2019. It only has one camera, uh, just like that. But I just want to give Apple two chances at the Pi just to make it fair with the Android. So all of those, Got them all loaded up on my iPad here. Let's take a look at some of them and uh, judge for ourselves. I'm gonna go over all the photos with you guys. I think it's about 15. And so if you want to take the test yourself without my impressions tainting your opinion or, or results, 
then go ahead and stop the video now and go run the test yourself. Uh, I'm also going to go over the whole thing without cutting the video because I want you to see that I'm not going to scroll ahead and cheat and look at which one is the Photoshop one and which one's not. I might fast forward through some sections because some of these I have to look really closely on which one I actually like better. But I, my goal is for this to be a completely fair test and show you exactly my opinion that I've had every time I've looked at these photos. I keep showing you this, but there's nothing on the screen. So I have all of the images loaded on the iPad. I have not looked at these in about five days, six days since I loaded them, so I cannot remember which is which. So this is gonna be a raw judging and there's a good chance I may end up picking the Photoshop as the one I like, but I'm gonna show you what I'm judging on as I scroll through these here. So this is the Canon SX740. That's the one with the really big optical zoom. It says 40 times optical. Now just looking at this, uh, I see, you know, this is darker. Um, this is more faded here. Uh, the pulpit definitely looks sharper. So I wanna say that I like this one better. So let's scroll down and that's the digital zoom. <laughs> so you see how the game is played? So you can kind of do this yourself if you want, or like I said, you can stop right now, go download the images yourself and, and run the test yourself and not listen to my judgments. Um, okay, so on this one, this, so I should specify, all of these digital cameras, they have what's called, well, in this case, it's called clear image zoom, but they're just trademark names and they're digital zoom, usually about two times, I think, maybe five times, but it's what they think looks good enough for a digital zoom for it to still be optically clear. Uh, and then they have what's called a full digital zoom where they just unleash all the stops and go full bore up to 20 times zoom or something. And those definitely look digitally processed. But I compared both. Uh, so this first one was the clear image zoom. So that's what they, like I said, they consider good enough. Uh, but now we're gonna go all the way in at this full digital zoom. So, that, so that's 40 times optical plus whatever processing digital zoom they went on top of that. I'm not gonna bother telling you if it was five or 20 times. It doesn't really matter. The whole point is scaling to this level, Photoshop or in camera. Okay, so looking at this one. Oh yeah, I mean, look at how grainy that is there. Uh, that's good enough for me. I, I like this one better. Uh, so again, we picked. I picked the digital zoom. Uh, so that's it for that camera. So then I went on to the iPad Pro with this one times lens or just single lens. Uh, boy, yeah, ooh, you see all of those artifacts in there? That's really gross. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this one easily looks better. You can just see those artifacts all over here. So I picked the digital zoom again. <laughs> uh, so then onto the iPhone 7, again, just a single lens, uh, digital, so I did put, five times zoom. I can't quite remember if, uh, if you, sorry, if you think I can see what's, eh, what's over here, I can't, it's so small, I can't, plus I have a blinding light in my eye, I can barely see the screen anyway. I'm not cheating, I literally cannot see what's over there. You may be able to see it blown up on the screen over here, but I can't. Um, plus I don't want to cheat, so I'm ignoring it. All right, so again, there's lots of noise right in here. Uh, oh yeah, this is blurry, this is much sharper, so I'm gonna say I like that one. And again, pick the digital zoom. Okay, so okay, so that's as max as the, di the iPhone goes, is five times digital. But I thought, well, let's give it a chance and maybe not do it quite as big of a zoom. So I just went to, 2.4, so you know you have a slider how far you want to go in digital zoom. I took it about halfway, and uh, in post-processing I found out it was 2.4. So that's much more zoomed out. Um, but yeah, even here, this just looks clear. I can see the definition, uh, definition without zooming in. I can see the definition of the architecture better. Again, lots of digital noise around all of that. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna say I like this one, which again was the digital zoom. Now I wanna be clear that I did not process the images uh, in Photoshop. I did on one because I thought, well, maybe if I apply some clarity and some denoise and spend a little time tweaking the Photoshop one to make it look better, you know, manually, that it would look better. And one of these actually is that one. And I can't remember which one it is at this point, but every time I picked the digital zoom over even the one that I manually tweaked. And so the whole point of this, again, is get us in close, but if you can digitally zoom in all in one shot and not have to spend time stretching and post-processing and cleaning up the image in Photoshop, then why would you not pick digital zoom as your option? Uh, okay, so now we're into the Panasonic. That's why I keep lifting up here, the Panasonic. So this has a, a big zoom on it as well. I think it's uh, 35 times. Um, I, not, again, not giving you millimeters of focal lengths because none of that matters. It's just a matter of which one do we like better. Uh, this is blur, you know, lighter over here, lighter colored. God, my eye is blinded from my studio lights. Uh, this is you know, not as sharp as this. I tried to take all of these in the same conditions. It wasn't very windy and I would take a picture and immediately go take the complimentary picture. So the lighting and all of that shouldn't have changed at all. Uh, this just looks nicer up here. So I'm gonna say I like that one. And again, I picked the digital zoom. <laughs> uh, so that was, uh, the, Panasonic calls it intelligent zoom. So that's what they think is good enough, but uh, now we're at the full range, absolute maximum digital zoom of that camera. And I am seeing some noise in here, um, but this pulpit is very faded. It's much sharper here. Mm, this one's tough, because you could go for smoother, less noise over on this one, or you could go for sharper, here and I think I'm going to take the sharper I mean this one's darker too over here this one's darker so I'm going to go with this one that I like better and that's the digital zoom I mean now that I'm looking again I mean this is kind of blurry here well I guess it's the same thing there but either way I picked the digital zoom so now we're on to the pixel 4 XL so it has a wide angle lens and if you zoom this is what Again, this is the camera that made me think that digital zoom had gotten good enough, better than Photoshop in some cases. Uh, this is what started the whole thing off. So I took the wide angle lens to 0.8, which is as far of a zoom as you can go before it clicks into that two times optical zoom lens. And so this one's gonna be a lot different because we're only going 0.8 times zoom. Um, but let's see here. Okay, so, well, oh, this one's tough. I am seeing some noise in the sky. Okay, it's harder to see those um, power lines back there. So I'm gonna say that I like this one better. Yeah. And <laughs> I picked the digital zoom. I was a little worried there that I was gonna pick the Photoshop one, but nope. Uh, okay, so then I went to the two times optical zoom, I called it telephoto, and went to the full length of its digital zoom. And this is what they call their And this is what they market as their Pixel Super Res Zoom that we did the video on with the Pixel 3 back in the day. So this is, you know, they market it as being very good. So let's put it to the test. I gotta stop looking at the <laughs> light. Uh, I mean, just, yeah, cursory glance. These look sharper. The architecture here looks sharper. Um, yeah, this definitely looks noisier in here. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm gonna say I like this one better. And that's the Pixel Super Res Zoom for you. Onto the Sony ZV, which one is that? <laughs> ZV1, so they call their good enough clear image zoom. So this is the newest camera out of all of these, but I believe these are still the newest super telephoto cameras that these two companies sell. So we've got, you know, the three different kinds, Canon, Panasonic, Sony, so we've got a nice range. Okay, this, I don't know, it's almost like heat waves or something there across the architecture. This little thing back here, whatever it is, looks sharper over here. I also just like this board, that wooden board. I think it looks darker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this one better. That's the clear image zoom. Onto the full digital zoom. So again, this is a max telephoto plus zoom as it can go. And I don't even have to spend time on this. This is really blurry. Um, this, you know, the architecture looks sharper. I like this one better. And that's the Photoshop one. I told you there's one that I, I oftentimes go back and forth on which one I like better. And uh, this is the one. I actually picked the Photoshop one finally. Though it could be, you know, now that I'm looking at it, this edge is very blurry. So you may end up liking this one better. Uh, yeah, they're very close. But uh, today, I, with you guys, I end up picking the Photoshop one. Okay, now we're on to the Samsung Galaxy Note Ultra 20. And this one is with the wide lens at four times digital zoom. So that's as far digitally zoomed as you can go before it clicks into the telephoto five times optical zoom. And this is at the 12 megapixel. Oh yeah, I mean, no contest. This is so much sharper. This looks like garbage. Uh, so I like this one, and that's the, you know, the digital zoom. So then, like I said, I took it into 108 megapixel mode to see if I was able to crop in and get better details. And that looks like hot garbage. I mean, look at how overly sharp that is. This is not clear. That's gross. I'm picking this one. And I picked the digital zoom. Yeah, that 108 megapixels, I'm not sure what benefit that really gives you because maybe on wide angle mode, but they don't even use it for that 50 times zoom. They do not use the wide angle lens at all. I thought maybe they took the telephoto and the 108 megapixel photo and combined them together to make that 50 times marketing nonsense zoom level that they talk about. I covered up the wide angle lens and tried that and the image turned out the same regardless if I it had the option for the 108 megapixel camera to help with it. Uh, so it only uses the telephoto lens. So that 108 megapixel is gross. Okay, but now let's go into the telephoto lens. So that's five times optical zoom. I took it just to 20. It can go up to 50, but I wanted to see what it looked like at 20 before we get to 50. And mm, I do like the architecture there a lot better. This also has a halo effect going on. Um, there is some noise in the background that's kind of discerning, but overall, I just think I just I think the the main focus, this church, looks better in this image. And that's the phone. So I took it up to its maximum zoom, that 50 times digital zoom. And yeah, I mean, this one is just, I mean, it's sharper. But really, no contest. Uh, yay, bricks are clear. Yeah, I like this one better. 
And again, that's the digital zoom. So aside from that one that I told you, generally I go either way. Uh, and today with you guys, I picked the Photoshop one. Every single one, in my opinion, looks better using just the digital zoom. So if you're going to want to zoom in on something far away and show your audience, just use the camera. Saves you from having to process it later on in post-processing anyway, and they do an excellent job. So I have stated my case, and now I leave it up to the jury, aka you guys, to decide if what I said actually made sense or if I'm full of hot beans. Leave a comment in the description down below uh, letting me know if you are going to use digital zoom or if you still think that it's completely pointless and you're gonna stick with your Photoshop zooming. Again, like I said, this is not for printing. This is for, I want to show you something that's far away, clearer. I'm going, I'm going to use digital zoom. <laughs> that way I don't have to do the processing in the end. Just zoom into the level you want. Anyway, if you found this video interesting, please consider giving a thumbs up down below. It's going to help other people find my video when they're looking for this. And then if you feel like sharing it with your photography friends, I'd appreciate it. And if you want to see more camera focused videos, video editing focused videos, or my whatever Wednesday type videos, please consider subscribing. And then if you click the bell right next to it, you will get notified the instant that I drop a new video. But until next time, I'm doing what I love. Keep doing what you love. Thanks for watching.